Oh, oh, I think we're there. I see a red button. Did it go? Okay. I think so. Hi, Internet. <laughs> hello, Internet. All right, well, let me say hello to people then. Hi, everyone. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, September 29th, 2013, also known as the end of Breaking Bad. <laughs> the uh, end of Breaking Bad. For, for those of you who are not watching this right now because you're watching Breaking Bad and then you're watching this later in the archive, we really appreciate you watching this. Uh, please don't spoil the show for us. Yes. Uh, for those of you watching us live and, and not watching Breaking Bad, what is wrong with you? Um, the universe is awesome. The universe is awesome. Breaking all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, so like, uh, look, we got a big crew tonight, and there may be more joining us as well. So this is good. Now, where I live here on the west coast of Canada, we have a really big storm. So it's about 100 kilometers. No, was it? Uh, yeah, you said 100. 65 knot winds tonight is what's expected. Yeah. So it's just just awful. Um, yeah. So no no telescope from my house, but that's okay. I brought a bunch of friends, so I'm gonna start in no particular order. We got Corey Schmitz. Hey, Corey. And where are you? You're in the... Are you I'm outside? I'm in Iowa. He's United right States, right. Iowa. And the plan, the big plan tonight... That we, So I've got like a bucket list of things that I want to do before I die. Uh, and one of them is to be able to bring a bunch of uh, stuff into the Virtual Star Party. We want to do live views of... Um, we want to get some live views of some satellites, maybe the International Space Station, and we wanted to do star trails and meteor showers. And so we're going to try and experiment tonight with... Aurora. With the first one. And Aurora's, yeah. Oh. Um, so Corey's going to bring us live star trailing. So he's going to, he's got, so can you explain your setup, Corey? Um, I just have a Canon uh, 5D Mark II sitting in my yard with a 50 millimeter lens, so it'll show a little bit faster star trails um, since I'm zoomed in a little bit. And uh, I'm just constantly capturing 20 second exposures. Um, and those are saving to my computer, and then I'm just running them through a processing program that layers them on top of each other um, and keeps only the light pixels so that we can see the star trails as live as I can drag the images over into the program. Right, and so over the course of, uh, of tonight we should get this nice star trail built up that will catalog the whole, the whole hour that we spend. So I think this is going to be great. Um, all right, so Gary Ganella in Los Angeles. Hi, everybody. Uh, last, week, here. last week you, uh, you were... You weren't even able to get any images at all because your computer was malfunctioning, but it's better it, now? Yes, it's actually working. It really frustrated me last week. <laughs> yeah, how we could tell. Uh, Michael Phillips, uh, are you, you're indoors, which means your weather's bad? Uh, well, it's a little iffy, and I'll show you some of the clouds later. Um, hopefully, I can get some hydrogen alpha shots for everyone. Uh, but I'm trying to drive remotely now. A la Gary here. Uh, it's going to be cold winter, and I don't want to be outside anymore. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> practicing being in my warm room here. So. Yeah, well, another person in the warm room is Roy Salisbury. Look at that. Hello. Comfort of his office in uh, Las Vegas, operating his remote observatory from a secret location somewhere in the Nevada desert. Um, Arizona desert. Arizona. Wow. Arizona. Never, never mind. It's close enough. Never mind. Close enough. <laughs> close enough. No, yeah. he wishes. He wishes it was in the Nevada desert. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We got Scott Lewis. Hey, how's it going, everyone? No telescope from Scott. Only uh, my quick witty repartee. Rip, yeah, exactly. That's all we get from Scott. All right. Uh, and we got Stuart Foreman. Hey, Stuart. Hello. How are I know you? you're still setting up, so I'm still setting up. I'm uh, in the middle of focusing, so I'm going to be a little distracted for a few minutes. But okay, hi everybody. Well, don't be distracted, Stu. You need to focus. Focus. All right. Uh, so, so if you've <laughs> never done this, seen this, uh, joined this before, what this is is what we call the virtual star party. This is where uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five telescopes, five live telescopes that are hooked up in different parts of the United States right now, and they're all uh, directed at different objects, and we will move from object to object and sort of see what's up in the night sky tonight. We'll be looking at definitely nebulas and nebulae and uh, galaxies and star clusters. We're going to try and do this uh, trick with this, the, the circumpolar uh, star trailing. I don't know if anyone can grab a planet. Maybe, uh, I don't know if Stuart can anymore. His, with his, uh, no, he can't, he's telling me. No, I don't think there's any planets up anymore. We've lost all our planets. Uh, so, yeah, and now we're happy to take requests. So if there's some object that you know that's in the night sky, if you want to do that, 
Now, I'll warn you in advance, uh, the tool that we use to uh, read your comments is not working so great anymore. So sort of two places where we highly recommend if you want to give make any comments. One is over on YouTube. That right. really is the safest place, for sure, because the YouTube comments are still sort of popping up into the, the view that we're seeing. And then yeah, the other I one is the over event. on the event page on Google+. Plus. So if you're yeah. watching this on Google+, Plus on the event page, feel free to make a comment there, and I think we should be able to... St- you know, stay on track. I can definitely see the YouTube comments. And Scott, I don't know. Yeah, you've got the event page one, so yep. you could tweet at us using the hashtag Star Party. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, yeah, but yeah. Or you can mention us on Twitter, which is uh, the underscore VSP, and I will get a notification, and yeah. I will wave high or retweet you or. Um, we're getting from uh, Bob Drac that we're getting echo upon echo upon echo. So if anyone else is getting echo, that would be, please let us know. And uh, but I a bunch hear of people saying, yeah, people are saying they're not getting any echo. So I'm not hearing any echo, and I'm I hate all echo. So yes, he does. <laughs> um, so maybe you have two instances open. If you're open on the event page and on YouTube, I believe the event page auto starts when we go. So you might want to check your event page. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Hey. All right, let's let's happen. Okay, so let's see some telescopes, some pictures. I'm gonna move to, I guess, Roy's view. Oh uh, no, you're oh. on my view yet. No, okay. Well, let's move to Gary's view then. We'll start with Gary's view. Okay, this is um, the famous Eagle Nebula, nice. M16. Oh, okay. So that's the that's the sort of zoomed out view there. There's the zoomed out, and then here's the zoomed in with the uh, pillars of creation and all that neat stuff going on in there. Oh, that's yeah. great, Gary. Yeah, you can really see the one cool thing now is we've got the uh, we've got the HD version of yeah. Hangouts on Air now. So if you're watching this and you're not watching it in HD, you definitely are going to want to switch over to HD. Uh, Jacob Paisley wants to know what video game are they playing? Uh, we're playing space. Yeah, we're playing, um, we're playing reality. Universe. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is your universe. Yeah, Jacob, something with... and we're sharing it with you. Yeah, the Call of Duty. Of the galaxy. Yeah, Jacob wants to know if it's Call of Duty. Yeah, it's Call of Duty. Yeah. This or is Kerbal. our MMORPG where <laughs> we hook up telescopes from around the world and share it with you live, and we level up each week. We're at, what, week 80-something, 90-something? Yeah, okay. yeah, we're closing in on two years now. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Has You're, it really been that long? I have really it is. Fraser. Yeah. What, what was that, Scott? Scott? You're, you're becoming my longest relationship soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Um, <laughs> that's great. So, okay, so so let's talk about the Eagle Nebula before we talk about our uh, boundless love. Um, <laughs> uh, group hug. I just broke it for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're looking at the pillars of creation. Yeah, sorry. I, you know, it sounds like me sort of uh, responding emotionally to Scott's, uh, you know, love. It's actually me uh, looking up some information on the Eagle Nebula and crying a little. Um, so it's a star-forming region. Star-forming region. This is also known as man. This is the worst star party ever. Let's hope. No, it's the best. Course. Our love makes it perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is the Eagle Nebula. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go home now. Are you gonna go <laughs> more home? This is rivaling the Super Bowl one we had, uh, uh, the post Super Bowl one we had. Which uh, was, yeah, I think we've gone to way too casual and comfortable now. All right, let's yeah. let's get professional. Again. Where are our scientists? Where are our sci- <laughs> That's the problem. We don't it is. we don't want to make fools of ourselves in front of the PhDs, but we have a PhD with us, which is Stuart. Um, doctor. I'm, yeah, no, I, I don't. I'm not smart enough for a PhD though. <laughs> Um, right, okay, so this is, yeah, star-forming region in the uh, constellation, uh, man, where is it? It's in, Sag- isn't it Sagittarius or is it Serpents? It's in Serpents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so what you're looking at is the kind of object, can you zoom back out, Gary? This is the kind of object, kind of region, that our own sun formed uh, billions of years ago, and so you get this this situation of this cold hydrogen gas and uh, and then some event like a supernova sw- like shockwave sweeps through the region and then yeah. starts to collapse down the the, the gas into these cl- these clumps and eat within each one of these clumps is stars that form 
and the first thing that happens, you get these really super massive stars that 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 happen like maybe 50 times the mass of the sun, 20 times the mass of the sun. They only live a few million years, and they detonate and they release more heavy materials into the into the nebula, and that helps to form some of the the longer lasting stars like our own sun. And uh, <clears throat> as we can you zoom back in again, Gary, so you can see the the pillars of creation. So this. These are the famous Hubble. You've seen them in the Hubble Space yeah. Telescope pictures, that, right? And that's how they became famous when they yeah when Hubble went and got a really good set of them there. there it's so, kind of oriented how Hubble is. And so when they say the pillars of creation, this is a region where there are new stars being created. There are planets being created in this spot in space, and that's what you're seeing. Now you can't see the stars themselves because they're actually cloaked in the da the the you know the gas and dust. I'm not sure if planets are forming right so soon though, because it still has the accretion disk. So it's going to take a while for any of that remaining matter to create planets after the stars formed. But soon thereafter. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just because like, they're also so young and hot and massive that they explode. So kaboom. any planets they do form, they're not going to stay there for long. Right. Exploding. This is a, a one-minute exposure, and it is live. It, I took it about three minutes ago. That's great. Okay, I'm going to move over to Corey's view so we can see the progress. Check it out. Yes. So, Corey, can you explain sort of more specifically here what's what's going on? Um, like scientifically or <laughs> tech, tech, <laughs> technology-wise? Well, round. you can you can we'll do both. I mean, obviously the Earth is spinning. The top of the middle there is Polaris. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so um, so this is a program called StarStax, and it's actually uh, a really nice cross-platform application that um, will take any images that you give it and. Uh, do, it just does some really simple processing. In this one, what I've got is additive light lightening to each image. So it takes the bright pixels from every image and overlays them on top to create um, a final composite image. And so this is, since we started, about five minutes before we started the, the star party, I was, I've was i been capturing 20-second um, exposures with my 5D and a 50-millimeter lens um, from my backyard. And this is the progress that we've got so far. No, this is gonna be great. So by the time we're done, we're going to see just how much the Earth is rotated during the VSP, and yeah. so we'll have a, a a star trail for the entire time. So, so this now is this is him building it. Yeah. That is really neat. And so if we get a meteor in the area, it should show up, right? It will. Yeah, as long as uh, it didn't, you know happen in between the stop and the start of the shutter, which happens a lot. I've taken thousands and thousands of images, and that happens all the time where I just miss it. it yeah, it's just happened to me, much. too. So. How, like, if, you know, if you do a Star Trek, how long, typically, till you do see a meteor on a regular night? I don't, I mean, it just depends on... How lucky you are. <laughs> it just depends. It depends yeah. on if we're at meteor shower time, you know, yeah. or if... I don't, the, the funniest thing is the brightest meteors I've ever caught have been when there's no active major meteor shower happening. Um, well, one was there was last a really night. bright one that happened just, a, I think, a couple of weeks ago in uh, Alberta. There's some great video on YouTube of this just amazing bright meteor heading overhead. Almost yeah. like, you know, it felt reminiscent of the one in Russia. But Okay. Yeah, I caught a really, really bright one on the horizon last night um, doing a, a time-lapse video, and... That one and another one a few months ago are the brightest I've ever caught, and neither of them were during any sort of major uh, meteor shower. So. Oh, and can you show your video, that one the video you showed us before you started? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me, let me cue that up, and then I'll let you know when I've got it. Sure, yeah, I'll go over to, uh, to Michael's view here. Michael Phillips. Yes. Renowned um, planetary astrophotographer has moved into hydrogen I alpha. I am branching out, yes. I, I got jealous. I mean, I join this thing all the time, and I show planet after planet, and I see all these people showing this cool mono hydrogen alpha stuff, and I decided to jump in the waters. Uh, I'm shooting through a little bit of clouds, and I'll show you some of those later, but I think it's just subdued to a little bit of haze right now. So this is a 10-minute exposure in hydrogen alpha, which is insane. And this is actually part of the Heart Nebula, I don't know what part of the heart it is because it's um, a little bit bigger than my field of view. 
but I was intrigued by all the little dust lanes and things like that in here. And I'll zoom in. I know you like to embiggen things. Yeah, so you're all this little well, naughty. Well, it looks like your your resolution has gone back to lower bandwidth. I'm not sure. Yeah, I I, I crop some of the extra frames out using the regular screen share program, so I can flip back to the other one if you want. Yeah, can you try, you try the the screen sharing program just because it's sure. uh it's a little uh. Yeah. A little low res. Uh, I'll switch to this. How's that looking? Oh, look at that. Paul Stewart is joining us. This is awesome. Nice. Yeah, Paul Stewart is a fantastic astrophotographer who lives in New Zealand, so I'm hoping he's going to give us the sun. He's been known to do that sometimes. Uh, how, how does this compare? You can see the bottom portion. Oh, that looks, that looks a lot better. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Not bad. Look at all these little, all these little knots and things like that. I, I think the Heart Nebula is part of a, an old supernova, isn't it? It's just a large one. I don't, I don't know much about it. The Heart Nebula? I don't know. Yeah. Let's all these little, little knots and things like that down in here. I think the heart is actually this part down in here. I mean, I'm climbing the, the learning curve here of finding guide stars, and the guide star I found is kind of off center for the moment. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's an emission nebula. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shows are pretty good in hydrogen alpha, I think. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Travis Estrella, what a great name. The perfect name. Uh, Travis Starr wants to know if that image is going to be available somewhere, Corey. Will you upload it into the Hangout after you're done with it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to move. I'm going to say hi to Paul. Paul, hi, Paul. Can, you, can you hear us? I can hear you. Well, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Welcome. Hey, welcome. So, w what is this burning ball of fire you've brought us? Oh, There's no fire. Sun. There's no fire. It's fusion. This is this is, this is madness. Really, this that's is the sun right day. now. This is live. Oh, that's awesome, Paul. Oh my God. Now, so, do you have any way of, of zooming in to regions of it? I'll put a bar low in soon and we'll zoom right in. I don't see any sunspots. Well, and we're looking here in H-Alpha, aren't we, Paul? Yeah. There should be a sunspot right there. Oh, okay. Uh, and I love how you're able to see the, the filaments off of the limb. Yeah. So you're able. So when we're talking about the limb here, we're we're talking about the, the very edge of the sun. You're actually able to see the 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 magnetic fields of the sun twist and actually pulling matter off of it as it's entangled up. And it's amazing. <laughs> and the reason why we're able to see it here is because we're looking through um, the same filter that Gary's using. We're looking through hydrogen and alpha. And so when we look at the at the sun right now, typically with a white light filter, we're not going to be able to see this, you know, these these beautiful details. But we're we've actually have taken that that broad band of light and going down to one small swath of the spectrum to be able to look at it here to see the details of you know of the amazing complexity that's going on, on the surface of the sun. So I'm not a solar guy, but isn't it a solar maximum? It is a solar maximum. And I and I, I like I said, I'm not a solar guy, but I've been you know, I look at the sun once in a while with my little sun funnel that I built for the Venus transit and it has been extremely quiet lately. I have not seen sunspots in weeks. You're gonna give it a complex it, mic. <laughs> it is very, very, very low compared to the last few. Right. Um, the radio propagation just hasn't been worth a darn this uh, this cycle. Well, and yeah. it, there's a lot that we're still trying to learn about the sun. I mean, there's, and the, the reason why there's so much going on as far as the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we, we study our sun a lot because we're, when we know what's going on with our star, we're able to use that information to find out about other stars. And when it comes to the solar cycle and the reversing of the magnetic you know, field going on and, and how it all works, we still don't know. So the field of helioseismology is something that's still being deeply uh, studied so we can better understand our star to help predict big events like solar maximums, what, 
will happen, but also be able to understand what other similar stars are in our universe, and specifically in our galaxy, but also in the, in the universe. Uh, Nick Rose asks on uh, Google+, Plus: is our solar system still in a nebula? I assume if we are, it is so spread out that it can barely be detected. So, <clears throat> so no, our sun is not in a nebula anymore. In fact, we don't even know which stars we formed with. They, over the time, over the billions of years... Over, after 18 trips around the Milky Way, uh, we've gotten separated from all of the stars that we formed with. So, unfortunately, no. That sun, that that is is that's cool. Is that the nicest sun we've brought into the uh, hangout? Uh, well, it's 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 aesthetically pleasing because it's got a blue background too. Yeah, that yeah. blue background and it's, is an, and it's got natural color and it's live. Right? Well, so and, and look here, cool. looking here on the very left hand side. I, I wish we could zoom in right now, but you see that there's this little tiny fleck of matter that's coming off of a filament, as if it's about to completely just poof off the side. It, it looks like it's at nine o'clock to me. Do you, do you see that there, Fraser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I'm, I'm waiting for it to just break off and just float away. Into yeah, space. Wait, wait till it gets the bar logo going though. Then we'll get right in on some of this stuff. Wow. Okay. That is gorgeous. That is something. I, I, I'm afraid to move away. I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to wreck it. Okay. You're going to shed a tear? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to Roy's view because it's really nice too. Roy, what are we seeing? That is a portion of the Wizard Nebula, SH2-142. Is it upside down? You know, I was sideways? trying to figure it out. Yeah, see, uh, we went through this last week because I had the Wizard Nebula. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and you had it, yeah. and I'm like, it doesn't look like the Wizard, and this looks yeah. exactly like yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, there's like his like his his hand outstretched, and then, yeah, there it is. He is upside down. He's got him yeah. upside down. Is he upside down? Yeah. I was gonna say, if it was the same, then two rights don't make a wrong. We're, we're going for the right. <laughs> <see? laughs> let's see if I can fix it. You can switch it. You can flip it. Uh, well, let's see what this thing lets me do here. Uh, zoom, tools, rotate, left. How about we flip it vertically? There we go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you can see then his like pointy wizard hat on the top now, and right then his outstretched yeah, and then his outstretched hand to the left now. There. Yeah, that's his hand, and then his flowing and robes a around. Stubby him. hand right there. Yeah, his second hand, right? I think he's casting magic missile. Yeah, with his second the magic missile the... at the ready, and there's there goes the magic missile. Yep, magic oh. missile on the darkness, and that's why we can see things. <laughs> oh, you're attacking the darkness? <laughs> uh, okay. Nerd oh, there out. Are girls in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to move to Stuart's view, because Stuart is now aligned. Yes. He has the weapon aligned. Uh, this is the Bubble Nebula. And oh, that's great. Uh, this, um, I, we have seen before. I think Roy and certainly... Um, has brought it to us, but it's the first time I brought it to us. And this is a two-minute exposure bin three by three to uh, increase the gain. And even then, you can still it's still pretty sharp, and you can still see the bubble and the circle on it. It's kind of cool. Is that I'm nice? actually doing? Could I'm you doing the uh, same one right now. in it? I, there we go. You knew what I wanted to see. I knew what you wanted to see, but I wanted to show you the the, the whole thing. Yeah, the yeah. Whole thing first. Um, so, oh, sorry. Ken Bruce wants to know. Wait, are we seriously looking at the sun live? Is this a VSP first? Yes, we are seriously looking at the sun live. No, it's not a VSP first. Oh, we've we have, done this before. We've done yeah. this before. Yeah, we have a few. We have uh, Teal Bristra in uh, Australia, and he's been known to bring us the sun. We have. Uh, yeah. So, and that that's it. Actually, and I think Paul's yeah, done it before. Paul and Teal. I don't yeah. think we've had anybody else from the southern hemisphere. Yeah. Has, yeah. I'm trying to think if anyone else has done it. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it's terrific. And then also, I mean, Scott did it in uh, when we had the Transit of Venus. Yeah, that was and, insane. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. They, a bunch of us were there at the Transit of Venus. I mean, yeah, we. There was yeah. a bunch. You know, Michael was there. Stu. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had mine in my backyard doing it. Yeah. yeah. I, I went out to the desert a mile north of Mexico. <laughs> Wait, like, and it was, it was just jerry-rigged. I loved it. So I had my, my webcam hooked to a Coronado PSD, and I was using my cell phone tethering the internet out in the desert, just nowhere. <laughs> and we went for six hours until my band, like, 
I ran out of bandwidth, and, and T-Mobile was like, yeah, no more. You've been streaming for far too long. But uh, no, we had a great time with the Venus Transit. Uh, yeah. I was, I was glad that I didn't make the trip in vain. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, yeah. you know, 2117. Yeah, you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm we're ready. We're gonna be so ready for the next oh, one. Oh yeah, well, like, well, it's gonna be in a million ADP when we come to resolution. Yeah. And we'll be... <laughs> uh, okay, Corey, are you ready? I see you've got a, a video there. Uh, yeah, I've got this. Right, let's do it. Oh, this is video. great, everyone. Right? Are you ready? Yeah. That is so great. And the, that glow you see happening is from dew forming on the uh, lens because it got extremely moist last night. What's that? <laughs> moist. What's that object? What's that object that's showing up like just in the upper right now as it's going well, that's, up? That's uh, M45. That's M45. And then is that? It looks like there's a galaxy. Is that Andromeda rising at the end there? No, that's <laughs> that's just. Uh, one of Is the that just stars, the dew? I believe that's in Origa, but that's just from the dew. Yeah. Oh, it's from the dew. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, in the beginning... I, yeah, I oh, love watching Leonis move across the screen. That's awesome. I'm not sure. Oh, I think... I think M31 might be visible. As I see... I don't I can't tell with this. Yeah. Anyway. Video, it's not high res enough. anyway, that's fantastic. That is so cool. Uh, X Men 049 says, "Kind of funny watching the sun in a star party. It it it's a star. It is, it is a, star. It's a star. Yeah, yeah. it that's uh, my it's my favorite star. It keeps me alive. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Gary's view. The Propeller Nebula. That is what it is. Yes. This is a one minute exposure bin four by four, so I don't have a lot of zoom in room, but uh, it looks great tonight. It came yeah. out. I got real clear skies. Yeah, it's really, really crisp and clear, and you can really see those subtle details. Could you perhaps big in the middle? A little bit. Let me. Uh, oh, but yeah. you didn't. But you didn't bend it, right? So it's. It is binned. It's been four by four. So when I reach this point, you can see the stars are starting to turn into squares. <laughs> right. Right. Square stars. No, I, I'm I'm loving what we can do now since we're in HD. Yeah. Anyway, and this is really pulling out the detail. I'm I'm loving this. Yeah, thanks Google for Thank you, Google. Uh, yeah. You should make another documentary about us. We'd appreciate that too. Now in <laughs> HD. Now in HD. Yeah. I'd be up for that. Yeah. All right, what do we got now? I think uh Stuart got something new. Roy, have you got something yeah. new there? Roy's got I, the bubble. <laughs> I have he... the bubble as well. <gasps> Oh, that's great. Yep, we're blowing bubbles tonight, folks. <laughs> it's a rave. <laughs> in, in, I'm, I'm I, downtown LA. Let's do this. I, I have the cluster that's right next to the bubble. It's M52 or M54. Me I can't too. remember which. No, it's 52, yeah. 52? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, to I'm going to try piece. and do something here. Let's see if this is going to work. Don't break the internet, Fraser. Here come, internet, I will break you. <laughs> I will break you. Okay, check this out. Checking it out. Come on, little buddy. I saw something. There it is. This guy is like amazing. Isn't he a maniac? This is. Jeez. So that's the I bubble play nebula. Block all the time. If you just take a stroll around the block. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Zoom and enhance. Zoom and enhance. <laughs> So that is your bubble nebula. Wow. Love wow. it. Yeah. So what that is, this is a guy from Finland, uh, and I, I will butcher his name if I try to pronounce it, but uh, um, he, does, uh, he does these, he builds these 3D models of, of nebulae and then, and then renders them. Yeah. It's uh, J.P. Metsavanio. And uh, we've reported on tons of times on Universe Today. Uh, you can do a search for, like, 3D Nebula. It's just, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, he, yeah, he's just a boss when it comes to... You can go to his website. He's got some amazing photos. Yeah, and so what he does, right, is he looks at the Nebula and then tries to figure out what the different layers of it are and then, and then texture maps or renders them onto 3D objects and then he renders a fly-through going through this thing. It's, it's genius, yeah. 
So and here's the bubble nebula from from Roy again. Okay, Paul's yeah. brought us the sun back. I'm going to go back to Paul's view here. And I see a, a comment here as far as where's the propeller. That's in Cygnus. Oh yeah. So that w I missed who asked that, but whoever asked where's the propeller nebula, that is in the constellation Cygnus. It's in the sky. <laughs> it, it's up or down, depending where you're at. If your Paul, it's down. So those are, those are some really nice uh, prominences on the side of the sun there. So we're back to Paul's view, and uh, so he, now he's zoomed in. He's put in the Barlow, which is a... It's kind of like a multiplier for his, for his view. So the magnification goes from... I don't know what it was before, but Barlow will sort of triple the magnification or so. Is it a five times Barlow? What is it, Paul? I should be making this up. Tell yeah. Me. It's a two and a half times Barlow. Yeah. <laughs> And so it, it decreases the field of view, but it gives, um, you know, much... It's the same light, but you're sort of just focusing on one small area. So you get this much more detailed view. Oh, and you, I mean, you can see this is live. You can see how the, the, the sort of the sun is going in and out of focus. Every now and then you see this moment where it's super high detail. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Yeah. Now, the color that was on there before is obviously false, but is that a setting in your capture program? Because it's black and white now. Uh, I'm using a specialized program that does that for the previous yeah. one, but I can't use it with the parlor. Ah, uh, okay. And if everyone's noticed, Fraser's not yet complained about the lack of color on here. I won't do it. I, are you kidding? <laughs> I, I think I just did it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so just to keep in mind that uh, because you're using a... Uh, it's a hydrogen alpha filter on your telescope, right? Yeah, it is. So yeah. If it was a color camera, this would be totally red. It'd be totally <laughs> yellow. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so you're seeing just one wavelength of light, and so it comes in as, and from our perspective as black and white because the camera is just sensitive to this one wavelength. And so we're seeing the sun in this one wavelength that happens to include all of this crazy filaments and and uh, you know all this the, the all the structures on the surface you can see the granules on the surface of the sun just amazing oh and I highly recommend if you haven't already go check out uh, Paul's website it's the upside down astronomer right that's the one yeah which I love I, I, I love that we've kind of bullied you into that. <laughs> <laughs> Have we bullied him into this? I, I, I think it started as a, a real snarky uh, comment about you being in New Zealand, but yeah, I like it. I'm We're not fan. the ones upside down? All right. All right, well, I'm going to move back to Corey's up, view so we can see how arbitrary. Up <laughs> is arbitrary. All right, well, let's see how our, our star trail is working now. Only till recently, north has been up-ish. It used to be east. So, so I've moved back to Corey's view, and this is our updated star trail. Uh, just as I rebuild, I'm rebuilding it right now. Oh, we'll watch it <laughs> rebuild then. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Way yeah. to fail, Corey. Sorry, sorry. Anticipate what we need. Oh, that's awesome. And the problem is with this uh, acquisition. Uh, app that I'm using for my camera. It's um, normally you'd see it spin, but the file it does a different thing with file naming because it puts uh, temperature and some other things in there, so the the file names aren't in the right order. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we'd see it build nicer. Still no meteor. No. Yeah. See, we're not going to catch. There's probably been ten, and they've probably been <laughs> in between every shutter. Right. You're watching. Like a fish, you caught a fish this big. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in that mode, though, wouldn't they get blended out? Oh, no. No, this is lightning. This is uh, okay. additive lightning, so it's not averaging. Oh, that's okay. great. All right, we'll come back and check it out later. I'm going to move to... Man, so many choices. Now. I'm going to move to Stuart's view. This is the Witch's Broom Nebula, also known as the Western Veil. Vale. Um, it's much better in hydrogen alpha, but um, I don't have enough time to do that uh, for this virtual star party. That takes about a 10 or 15-minute exposure. But this is a two-minute uh, bend... Uh, three, three, or four, four. I can't remember which um, uh, of the Western Veil, vale. and you can sort of see Harry Potter sitting on the top. Harry Potter's the the big star, and then the witch's broom uh, underneath it. Um, I don't know if that's really Harry Potter. I yeah, mean, Gary, Gary can Gary can get a nicer view of this. With I think it's totally Hermione. 
It's yeah. not. Racist. Could be. <laughs> uh, Ronald, Ronald uh, Culmer asks, any chance for Comet Ison? Um, so Comet Ison is... Where is it in right now? It's super dim, and it's in... I think what constellation. It's going to be a morning object. We're going to be seeing yeah, it as yeah. a morning object. Gemini, once it, yeah, it's in about uh, in about three weeks or so. We should start to see it again. Yeah. Four weeks. Yeah. Like early. Um, let me think. Early November, we should start seeing it. And so, but it's a morning object, so we're going to have to find somebody who's in the. Uh, I guess I don't know. Do we know anybody who? I guess someone in England. One of our friends in England. Hopefully, could bring we, us ice. We in. have some people over that way. Maybe. Yeah. We of, uh, of Ahmet as well, over in Turkey. He might be able to get something for us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if Ahmet will have it the time, if it's still going to be light for him. He should be able to start doing it. Yeah, that'd be great. But anyway, so... John, Malaysia, I, we can, we'll reach out our feelers. Plus, yeah. you know, I, I do have my friends over the Hubble Space Telescope that's going to be taking some photos for us as yeah. well. Uh, you know, calling we, a couple favors. We we definitely want to bring in Comet Ison live. That is definitely part yeah, of the plan. So, sure. so yeah, we're just... I'm, like, if we're lucky, it's going to be people out there with, like, wide field cameras watching it just tear up the whole night sky. So it's, you know, this could be uh, quite the comet. Um, you won't need any special gear to see it, just your yeah. eyes. So but that'd be but don't try and actually look at it because it's going to be so close to the sun when it approaches you know, it's gonna look. You know, it's gonna be the brightest point is when it approaches the sun. Obviously, because you're, you know, it's interacting with the, the solar wind. However, you have this bright thing that will burn your eyeballs called the sun, which Paul is yeah. giving us. Yeah. And so, um, it's gonna be a feat for those to actually capture images of it while it's passing by the sun. But don't try with your eyeballs unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, no. So Ronald Minch says it's near Mars at 4:30 a.m. right now. Yeah. So, so right now we would require some of our UK astronomers, and it's still kind of we kind of tough for them. But, but it should get a little easier in the next couple of weeks. So it's definitely a, a plan. It is. We wouldn't miss this for the world. If this breaks the way the direction that we want it to go, then we are going to be uh, all I, over this. I'm really hoping it breaks up on its path away from the sun. I, I want to watch it just shred to pieces on its way out. Yeah. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Now, has anybody here, any of the astronomers, viewed it yet? No, I haven't. No? 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 Not nobody. No, no, not me. No, just waiting. I mean, it's, it's wait for it to hit... No uh, pressure, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wait for it to hit perihelion. Wait till it, wait till it makes that closest approach, and then it flares up, and that's when it's going to really be great. So, yeah. you know, another couple of weeks. But I think about it, we've been talking about this since like January, February. Right. So, so well, finally, I mean, it's, it was discovered by amateur astronomers. Yeah. It's not something that we've known about for a while. It was discovered by what two Russian astronomers and their backyard observatory. So, this just you know the, the people we have every you know every week are discovering new awesome things that are in the news all the time. Yeah. All right, well, i got so many choices here, so I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to Gary's view. Mike, you had one, you got rid of it. I did. You want me to bring that one back up? Yeah. 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 This on, is, uh, this is on, the, the most, most so recent cart nebula I had, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this one just came down, and I'm finishing one more 10-minute sub, and I thought this one looked Is great. it another heart, or...? Yeah, is this the same view? I so think there are two hearts. They must, be, right. they must be from Gallup, right? Yeah. yeah. Or are they Vulcan? No, a, uh, like yeah. I, okay, uh, I'm going to Gary's view anyway. Anyway, okay. as soon as you have something, we'll, we'll switch to it. So, right, Gary, okay. this looks like Andromeda. It is, and I've got really good seeing tonight. You can see the dark oh, lanes yeah. in here. Yeah. And this is, um, to show what a challenging object this is, this is a one-minute bend 4x4. Four and of course the center is completely blown out. Now let me load a different version of it real quick here. Do, 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 do. Save. Okay, it'll change here in a few seconds. But what I did is I stretched it more. So I took uh, more of the light area. See it? Oh, you can wow. now see yeah. that this is, this is bigger than my field of view. But right. it's a very challenging object. To get this right, you really need to do short exposures and long exposures and then combine them because the center is so bright and the outer area is so dim 
So this is 31 with its two companions. Uh, what, 32 and 110, Scott? Um, is it 101? No. no, I think it's one. I think he's right. I think it's 32 and yeah, 110. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. thinking of the freeways right over here. <laughs> <laughs> but the 110. It, uh, Traffic on the 110 is terrible. It's, it is terrible. It's very good seeing in Southern California. I've, I'm yeah, seeing dark no, lanes that I haven't yeah. seen in a long time. Yeah, it looks great. And you can see those all those star clusters in the arm down at the bottom there. Like you can see those knots mm -hmm. of, of star formation there. That's just wonderful. And it's headed right for us. It's, it's coming right it at us. <laughs> Three to four billion years, that bad boy is going to crash right into us. So. Oh, I think you know if we're going to wait around for the next Venus transit, we might as well wait around for Andromeda to get here. Right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move to Mike. Heck? Oh, Michael, this is this is lovely. Look at that. Yeah, I think my my uh, hazy problems are disappearing a little bit, so I get a little more fidelity on this one here. You can really see a lot of the little details and things like that. And then uh, down here is the actual heart. I think it's just off center, but down in the lower right. right here is the center part. I'm of trying to do area. that right now. The that same, looks like the, the Pac-Man Nebula, isn't it? No, the, the one I'm trying to take a picture of right now is the, the lower portion of it. Okay, I'm oh, going to okay. Roy here. And so, Roy, what are we looking at? <clears throat> that is the Pac-Man Nebula. It is the Pac-Man, okay. Yes. It's almost... Mm -hmm. Too zoomed in. Are, are you not zoomed in though, right? You're just no. That's that's my resolution. <laughs> but I, this is not an object that I would normally take a picture of because I can't get the full the full right. range of it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a frustrating thing. I believe me, I know. <laughs> yeah, so you can see the Pac-Man shape, but you, it looks a little better in a wider field of view just because yeah. you can see that 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 mouth shape and then that his little eye there. You need a yeah, smaller scope, Roy. You, you need a worse yeah. scope, Roy. You need to you need to like go out and hit your scope with a hammer, and then see if that brings the resolution down. A bit. I I actually have a focal reducer that I'm getting for this scope, so I can bring it down a little bit. Ty Young asks, first time viewer, what's your favorite cluster in the sky? It must be a globular cluster. In a the globular sky. cluster. What's uh, your favorite, I'm, or maybe favorite object? Like, what's your favorite object? Let's get everyone. Corey, what's your favorite object in the sky to look at? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I like I like M seventy one. It just was such a rich but but resolvable faint cluster, and it just it just lit the whole field of view up when you look yeah. at it through an eyepiece. It just was beautiful. M seventy two was fun. Yeah, Gary, what's your favorite? Um, to look at, I don't do a lot of looking, but to photo, probably the Pelican Nebula. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul, what's your favorite apart from this sun? Uh, Vega Centauri. Vega Centauri? What is that? Omega Centauri. Omega Centauri. Oh, right, Omega Centauri. So, in other words, a cluster that we never see. Yeah. Exactly. Does that even exist? Oh, that that's just what he's, he's just trying to rub it in our nose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's <laughs> oh. And I love to see the uh, yeah the large Magellanic cloud and the small Magellanic cloud and you know sometimes it's cool to look at Alpha Centauri the closest yeah, uh, star to the Earth yeah you just keep rubbing that in Paul see what what we really do need to do is one of these weekends we need to flip around our times and get it so so, so Paul and Teal yeah. and everyone else can can feature there and I think yeah we need to get doing. Yeah, well, well, we, or we just need to get somebody from the Southern Hemisphere, someone from, like, Brazil or Argentina to join us, because then they'd be able to get the night sky at the same time that we are, right? Well, we don't want Paul to be our one-trick sun pony. You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got to pick up and move to Argentina, I think. Is, you know. All right, Paul. You, you know uh, Roy, you're... Roy, what's your, favorite, what's your favorite object in the night sky? My favorite object to photograph is the Sombrero Galaxy. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a great one. It's yeah. just so perfect. It's just there's there's the lines on it. I mean, it's just so sharp and crisp. Yeah, yeah it's very sci-fi looking, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a great elliptical galaxy. Uh, that's one I love. Uh, Scott, what's yours? Oh, I I couldn't tell you. There's so many, um, and I don't do much observing anyway. Um, it was when it comes to, as far as studying goes. Oh, I love anything. our okay. our star. I love our sun. I, like I sun. really, really do. I, but I'm more of an. I love the astrophysics part of it. So yeah, I love I love the sun. For me, I gotta say it's Saturn. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I almost forgot about planets, yeah. I think Saturn definitely would take the cake. I think above all the objects. Right? Yeah. And then if and if I had to pick like a more deep sky one, probably the rosette, which uh Really? I I and, the and, the, and, the, and the Ring Nebula, yeah. Right. So I like the Ring Nebula too. But I think for the Ring Nebula I have it was one of the first objects that I was able to pick out with a telescope yeah. that was sort of a challenge for me and and yet the shape was so obvious and it it just was it was a real reward to get that in the telescope. So yeah. I'm gonna move back to Corey's view here. He's he's clearly showing oh, something wow. else. That's not a star trail, Corey. No, it's not. We were talking about the Heart Nebula, and this is the Heart and Soul Nebula that I took oh, wow. a couple of weeks ago with a 200 millimeter lens. Wow. So it's yeah. So it's such a big object that you need a yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So. I am. I'm currently taking a picture of that one thing down there at about five o'clock. Okay. The knot. <laughs> That's funny. The Teal knot. Castro says, "Okay, that was odd. I opened the event, and the first thing I heard was my name." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Teal, what's your favorite Teal, what's your favorite object? You yeah, can, uh, you come can, on, Teal. You can post in the comments. Um, and why aren't you here? Yeah, Teal, get on it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sh I'm showing mine actually. You you're letting you're letting New Zealand Oh, show are you? you? Okay, Teal, yeah. what is it? This is uh, the double double in uh, the constellation Lyra, and I love it uh, in in terms of just visual because you see um, at low magnification you just see a double two stars, but at high magnification you see four stars, right. and um, I just I just think it's a glorious visual object to look at uh, when you're when you're in star parties like at schools or something like that. And it's not a crappy copy, so it's even better. Yeah, uh, that's great. Okay, I'm going to go back and look at Paul's view of the sun just to revel in it some more. Ah, oh, Paul. Ugh. And Paul, could you do some like post some of your pictures into the Hangout so people can see what the stacked version looks like? Yeah, I'll do an imaging run after this. That would be great. Yeah, or even just like share an image even into this Hangout. But but look at that. Like You just get these moments where things settle down for a second there and you see the the everything's clear. Some moments of clarity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. It's like a blob of, like, plasma, plasma. blasted off right on the edge of the sun there, on the limb. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, there you go, Paul. Wow. Oh, there we go. So Stuart's got one of my favorite objects. There we go. Yeah, and this is actually interesting in that um, I forgot to take off the binning on this one. And if you look at the ring there, you can see what binning does to an image when you really zoom it in. And you can just see the little blockiness around the around the ring itself. Um, had I not binned it, you wouldn't see that. But the binning makes it um, uh, one. It makes instead of one pixel, you're looking at four pixels, which goes to one. It increases sensitivity, but it also um, decreases the resolution. So I left right. it up there just just for more just out of curiosity and interest. Yeah, that's great. And you can see how it's got that sort of hazy part in the middle of the ring. Right. Which is not the central star. Which is not the central star. That's right. We've, we've gone over this. <laughs> Thad has taught us well. Uh, oh, Teal. Teal says, I'm still waiting on a USB cable replacement. Currently no way to get an image from the scope to the piece. I think Corey might have some extra USB. Yeah, I hear he around. does around. <laughs> 60 uh, feet of it. Several <laughs> meters of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back to Gary's view. This is the Gamma Sig Nebula. Oh, wow. nice. In That's Cygnus. Cool. And this uh, star right here is Seder, which is the center of the Northern Cross. Right, yep. Have you, you haven't shared this before, have you? I think I did I, some time ago. Put it on the menu. Yeah, that's a new one to me. I yeah. like it. What was the exposure on that? Uh, that one was one minute, four by four. So people, also everyone, post your comments in the. If you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on the event, I'd love to hear what your favorite objects are. Yeah. Uh, Ronald Minch just put in the Horsehead Nebula. I got to. I agree. That is a fantastic object. It, it also for any of our astrophotographers that are watching this too. If you have a favorite object you like to image, put it in the event page as well. Yeah. Share yeah. your favorite thing to image that you've taken yourself. We love seeing your own astrophotography. Yeah. That's this is terrific. I mean, you can yeah. really see the, the, the all the nebulosity, and that star is just clearly lighting up big chunks of it. This is wonderful. 
And there's like a cluster mm -hmm. down in the bottom right of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the little cluster area. That's neat. Yeah, I, yeah, I does definitely add this for the. That's future. a great. That's a great picture. Yeah. Thank you. That'll that'll go up on the star. All of them will go up there. Mm -hmm. Probably tomorrow morning. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, let me see who's got something new. I guess I'm gonna go back to Stuart's view. Uh, this somebody mentioned uh, globular clusters, so I thought I'd grab one. <laughs> this is M13, probably my la our last view of it of the season, at least with mine, because it's just about to duck behind my house. Yeah. But um, you can see M13, and you can also see uh, um, I always forget the name of that little galaxy up on the upper right-hand corner of it. Um, uh, but this, I actually haven't done this with my scope yet. I'm actually, I'm my camera, I'm pretty pleased with it. This is a one minute um, bend uh, two by two. So this is the, the great globular cluster in Hercules. And look at that, that uh, little galaxy in the upper right corner. Yeah. There. Right. Awesome. And I, I don't know what that is. I'd have to look it up. It's a galaxy. NGC something rather. Yeah. Uh, so, so someone asked for the the uh, are bound together gravitationally, and they're very, very, very old. And so they, you know, since it's very old, they are made up of the original elements that were created with the Big Bang, which are uh, hydrogen, helium, and maybe a little lithium. And so we call them, you know, that they have a low metal content or low metallicity. They're extremely old. And they're just hundreds of thousands of stars all clumped together. So they're really awesome. NGC 6207. There we go. So what do they want? Who, who wants what? Well, someone asked if, they, if they, we could bring the Penguin Galaxy, which is ARP 142. Penguin. I'm not sure where it is. I'll look it up. Um, also known as NGC 2936. It's probably somewhere in the South Pole if it's a penguin. 2936, you said? Yeah, let me see where it's located. It's 50 degrees below the horizon. <laughs> 50 degrees below the horizon. <laughs> Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you might wreck your telescope. Through the Earth to, uh, camera and I'll be doing it. Yeah. Yeah, shoot it in neutrinos. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back to uh, to Corey's view and see how our uh, our star trails are coming along. Look at that. Is this like one of those paintings that you get at a fair? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, 122 images. That's awesome, Corey. So far. And is that a an airplane along the bottom there? Yeah. Yep. It's actually a spaceship. Let's start this. Um, is it a satellite? Uh, uh, no, it's a it's a uh, it's an airplane. Okay. Yeah. But it originated from Planet X, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's be right. Uh, Will yeah. Kalman has posted a beautiful picture to the. Uh, is this your picture, Will? It's a um, man. What is that? The Iris Nebula, I think. He's posted it into the comments on the event page. Looks just fantastic. That, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's a nice picture. Yeah. All right. And I'm Jim Baker is also saying here that his his favorite the the Orion Nebula, which is again a beautiful. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I move to Gary's view. Is that also this the is, witch's broom? Yep, the veil. I can uh, do this. The Nimbus uh, 3000. Yeah, that puts it uh, a little more the way we were looking at it before. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm loving this HD stuff that we're getting. Yeah, I know. It's great. This so has made the VSP so much better. I know. It really has. Um, so the, uh, right, and so the Veil Nebula, this is part of this supernova remnant. So mm -hmm. I think it was about 5,000 years ago, a, super, a star detonated, mm -hmm. and we're seeing the, the chunks of shockwave of materials slowly moving out from this object in the night sky. And it's amazing just... Well, Stuart, you're really windy right now. Sorry, I'll... I already <laughs> did. <laughs> Sorry, Al. Too late. You, get, you will get muted is what you'll do. Um, yeah, and so and so we're seeing this sort of the shrapnel cloud that's moving out, and you can see bits and pieces of now. The, the, the shockwave is so big that it takes, you know, multiple photographs to, to get a whole view of it. Yeah. Um, w... Wench9 says, I saw the Eastern Veil last night. 
So post a picture if you took a picture. Yeah. Yeah, let's see it. Lori Pierce says the moon. Hard to argue with that one, too. The moon... Man, did you see the moon that we had? Oh, you were there for that last week, right? I the hate the moon. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hate the moon. We hate the moon, of course. But also... Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. It's the worst thing in the world, except for when it's the best. Yeah. Um, well, what we had last week... You have week, to embrace it. Yeah, what we had with Chris, though, was great, because he was getting it from the UK, so it wasn't ruining any of your viewing... And uh, it was just unbelievable the the resolution. Like if you haven't seen it, go back to last week's Star Party because it was it was absolutely terrific. Yeah. Um. Very cool. Okay, we're we're starting to run out of time, and it it's so much stuff to see. I I'm <clears throat> awesome. Um. Okay, so Mike Phillips, what do you got? I have M thirty four, which is just I think an open star cluster, which is yeah. not terribly exciting, but. I think what's more, what's more fun is is why I went for a cluster over the uh, nebula was was these the natural nebula, nebula. Master, the, nebula the local nebula. nebula yeah yeah the the local yeah, nebula at, at one point it just washed out I, I was like where'd my guide star go and it <laughs> disappeared in a cloud of haze oh that's something uh, all right Roy Salisbury what do we got. That is the lower part of the Heart Nebula. So if you remember the one that Corey had, which was the, the full picture, down in the lower corner of it was just a little knot down on the heart. That's what that is. Oh, so this is a left ventricle. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's ask the doctor of the group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm muted. I can't answer. Which part of the heart is this, Stuart? It's a left uh, I, c- I actually can't see it from where I am. Oh, okay. I'm located right. from You're the right. only one prepared to answer this only question. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. It's the uh, right aorta. Actually, it looks like a, a sheriff's badge, I think, if you ask me. <laughs> it does. It? Uh, yeah. Or like a, I'm seeing a face now. The paradelia is kicking in. Uh-oh. This will be my, this will be new, my new project. I'm going to spend all week yeah. on it. That sounds great. All right, what do you have, Stuart? Oh, the dumbbell. You know what this is. Yeah, it's the dumbbell nebula. Yeah. Oh, it looks I, great, too. Look I, at that. So I, I actually yep. showed this to my daughter last night through an eyepiece, and she didn't know uh-huh. what a dumbbell was. So I had to, I said, oh, it's the apple core nebula. And she said, oh, okay, I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> know your audience. <laughs> you know your audience, yeah. Oh, Gary's showing the rest of the uh, of the veil. That's the eastern veil. That's not the rest of it. That's another piece. Just another piece, yeah. 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 Oh, it, it, just here in the event page too, Nick Rose shared a, a an image of the Orion Nebula he took, and it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. So I'm looking at Roy's heart. I have no idea what part that would be. We can make it up. And I think Left Will is now right. sharing an image of the Laddie launch. Uh, let's see here. This is the Falcon 9 launch. Is that the Falcon 9? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cause it, yeah, because it's a day launch, yeah, not a night launch. Yep. Uh, Helen Reed wants to know, how close together are stars in a globular cluster like that? That's a good question. Yeah. I, I think it also depends where in the globular cluster they are, because... Like, right you know, in the how, middle. Yeah, yeah, when you're getting closer, they're going to be more dense. You know, as yeah. you, this bursts out just because of the that, that's a That's a sad question. Yeah, it really or is. Pamela um, question. The let me see. So the radius of like say M13 is 84 light years across. So you're looking at um, 100,000 stars. No, ish. How many are in there? 300,000. 300,000 stars within a diameter of 84 light years. So they're really packed together. Yeah, they're really packed together. I mean, as you can see too, as you're getting out, they become more loosely dispersed. And that's you know they have they are tightly packed anyway when you're when they are in there towards the center, but they yeah I that's why they're I think they're so strikingly beautiful because you can see that they're all there there's just a huge yeah. clump of stars in the sky. Uh, I put it back since we're talking about it. So. Oh, okay, great here. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna move back to Paul's view. Um, just to make sure we get the sun before we have to go, because it's just outrageous. And then, uh, Corey, you ready for one last uh, Star Trail image? Yeah, I'll process the last few images here quick. 
But that sun is great. And could we see the full view again? I guess I don't, I don't want to make Paul do that because then he's got to pop the Barlow out, and it will take too long. So I think we'll we'll just enjoy this view here. No, oh, it's that's amazing, Paul. Yeah. I've missed you too. I I don't know. I, I think I, I've I'm cheating on you, and I love Paul again. Sorry yeah, for I did. Can't can't blame you. He's uh, yeah. he is all that, and he's upside down. And he's upside down. <laughs> he's upside down. And he talks like a hobbit, so it's great. <laughs> uh, actually, they don't talk like That's that. That's racist, Fraser. Hobbit, hobbitist. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> That's terrific, man, Paul. This is. I'm so glad you joined us. I really yeah. am. This is wonderful. It's so great. So glad you were. What a what a pleasant surprise to have you join us, and bring this sun. And I can't wait to see the sort of output picture. It's going to be great. Oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Stuart's got a, another view of the of M13. Yeah, I just I just embigged it and zoomed it in. That's great. Yeah, just because we were talking about how it how uh, packed together it is. And we got Roy's. Oh, Roy, this is amazing. That's I, this is not live, of course. No. Look I figured I didn't that. have anything else, so I put up my picture that I just finished. So you took this one tonight? No. No, not tonight. Like, it's not live, but you've been working on this recently then. Yes, I just finished it last night. I spent uh, a better part of a week and a half on that one. Oh, wow. Wow. That looks great. All right, I'm going to go to Corey's view here as the uh, Star Trails build. Look at that. Well, that's it. We've, we've checked this off the list, off the bucket yes. list now, Corey. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. I love it. Yeah, uh, looks like that was the last one. Achievement unlocked by Corey Schmitz. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Well, why don't we wrap it up? So, so um, we could we could talk about quick too the fact that if you look in the middle, Polaris is not in the middle. It's not. Polaris is not the North right. Celestial Pole. It's not. It's, it orbits north. around. The, well, orbits is the wrong term, but it go. It, it is not the exact. Celestial pole in the northern hemisphere. Do you have any way to kind of get to the middle of the image here? Uh, so you can see the it close oh, up. I think I can zoom. Yeah, let me, uh, let me do that. Because we can't really see it that well from the <clears throat> wider view. Yeah, if you see that the big bright point, that's Polaris. Yeah, that's. It's uh, not. It's not at the celestial north pole. Did you see that? That's. A good that's... Guy, oh, so that's Polaris to the. Yeah, it's the bright, it's the bright little purpley hued thing to the right, and it is not the North Celestial Pole. So you're telling me the North Pole is a lie? Correct. The North Star is a lie. It is. It it's is. close enough to be oh, north. Yeah. Well, I mean, sure, you're going to get to where you're going, but you know. You're but I, oh, yeah, if you're trying to polar align. <laughs> yeah, do not polar align. Do yet. not polar align with Polaris. <laughs> it will. It would just break your heart. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, okay. We've got a couple last images here, so I'm going to quickly buzz through them, and then we'll wrap it up. So, Gary Ganella, another... This is the northwest part of the veil. <laughs> just... I think that's it, isn't it? That's all of them. I've that's all of them. Now you've collected the whole set. Yes. And another Mike, achievement unlocked. See? Michael, Michael Phillips with... A tiny little piece of uh, the Milky Way with... Yeah, in addition to my weather challenges, I have tree challenges, too, but I love my trees, so they <laughs> know where they are. <clears throat> That's great. Uh, and Paul's got one last view. Oh, look at these filaments on the sun. Wow. And Stuart's got... This is, this is the... Bubble. Yeah, this is the same bubble, but it's uh, this is one I'm working on. This is a two and a half hour uh, luminance image. Oh, wow. So it's much so it's much sharper, and I'll zoom in on it, and so um, you can still really see the bubble aspect of it. Yeah. Um, it's a little, stars are a little elongated, but not too bad. And um, so this this is my current perk. I hope to get about ten hours of data on this if I can. If the weather holds. Yeah, no, you're doing great. Okay, well, why don't we wrap this up? So thanks, everyone. Thanks, all of the astronomers. Thank you very much, Corey, for doing this uh, Star Trail. We'll look at the result, and I'll, I'll mention it over on YouTube and uh, post it in Google+. Plus. That'll be great. Uh, Gary, I'm glad uh, your telescope was working again. It was great clear skies tonight. That was really terrific. Gorgeous skies, and I'm really glad it's working, although I'm building another computer for it. It'll be faster. 
<laughs> never end, never ends. Can All you right, build me one too? Ends. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good job, me too. Arnie. Yeah, just, you want one too? All right. Just send money. All right. Yeah. Bring up the VSP custom build. <laughs> Michael, good job on the heart. That's great. Thank you. Welcome to welcome to the Deep Sky crew now. I'm almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're and Paul Stewart. That's you've blown our minds tonight. You there, so, Paul? You there? Hey, somebody. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, man. My pleasure. All right, Roy Salisbury. Good work on your. Uh, let's see that. What's your next project going to be after you finish that bubble up? I am doing I'm the the heart nebula. You're gonna do, so you're going to work on this big. Heart. So you're going to do the whole thing, sort of like what Corey had. No, I'm just going to do just that one section. Okay. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that next week then. That should be done by next week. <laughs> All right, Doctor Foreman. Thank you very much for the. Uh, let's see. Let's see the the final output of this one too next week. I'll, I'll working on it. If I can, if I can <laughs> get it through. Dr. Foreman. Yeah, 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 the weather has not cooperated the last few days, but you know. Yeah. Such as I it can, is. I can hear though. You got, you got some wind there. I can hear in the background. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Scott, thanks again for helping uh, coordinate and uh, and Absolutely. set this up. It's uh, always a pleasure. All right, well, thanks everyone. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you all now. Astronomy Cast uh, starts again next week, so starting tomorrow, the new season begins, and so Pamela is back from her mad travel. We're going to be doing particle accelerators tomorrow, so that'll be at noon Pacific, uh, three Eastern, and that gets started tomorrow. And hopefully, then from here on out, week after week, we'll be doing Astronomy Cast. So, so and stay tuned for that. Just updated. If you go to YouTube on Tony Darnell's Deep Astronomy channel, yeah. I did a new episode on Mars. So check that out. And water there on? Water and an awesome rock. Oh, right. Which is cool. a very, very rare rock. But check it, it out. Like Space Fan News. Yay. All right. See you, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for watching, Bye. and we'll see you all Bye, next everybody. week. Bye, everybody. Good night, Bye. all.